Hi, Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And today's Ask Dr. Lyons question is, what is Lactobacillus plantarum? Well, let me answer that. Let's go to PowerPoint. Yes, Lactobacillus plantarum. WCFS1 is a particular strain of Lactobacillus plantarum, and it is one of the best studied lactobacilli. Its genome was reported in 2003, and currently only 30% of gene function is unknown. Whereas I'm sure everybody's heard of acidophilus and raminosis, those two bacteria, the genomes were only reported in 2005 and 2009 respectively. There are actually 26 genome sequences of different L. plantarum strains available in the NCBI database. I'm sure everyone is curious as to if you take L. plantarum, what exactly happens in your body? A study was done on L. plantarum NCIMB8826, that's the particular strain of L. plantarum, and it shows a high survival capacity in the human GI tract. So after a single oral dose of L. plantarum NCIMB8826, the survival of the bacteria from taking it by your mouth all the way to the ilum, which is the end of the small intestine, was 7%. So if you're thinking about taking a probiotic, not all of it is going to survive your GI tract. And this was measured in the ilum, which again is the end of your small intestine, in 18 healthy individuals in France. That study continued for seven days. So over seven days, individuals took L. plantarum NCIMB8826 orally, and then they also measured the fecal survival rate, and they found that to be 25 plus or minus 29%. This wasn't a huge study. It wasn't a large clinical trial. Again, this was looking at healthy individuals, and they just wanted to really understand the survivability of L. plantarum NCIMB8826. There were two other bacteria that were examined in this study, and they looked at L. fermentum and Lactococcus lactis. And you can see here that the ileal survival was only 0.5% and 1% respectively. Survival rates really depend on the actual bacteria and also the strain. None of the strains colonize the intestinal tract of these three that were studied. However, bacteria colonizing the epithelial surface were not studied. And this work was done actually to explore L. plantarum NCIMB8826 as a possible oral vaccine vehicle. If you're familiar with L. plantarum, you might be familiar with the strains 299 and 299V. And if you are, you know that these strains of L. plantarum colonize in the gut for long periods of time. So again, there's variability within the strains of even the same bacteria as to whether or not they colonize in the gut or not. L. plantarum 299V is a very popular, commercially available probiotic. Let's look at a little more clinical studies of L. plantarum. The 299V strain reduces in vitro expression of pro-inflammatory genes in a cultured model of colonic mucosa. L. plantarum has been shown to have anti-H. pylori activity, and that's super important because many of the children with autism also have an abundance of H. pylori in their stomach. L. plantarum has been shown to improve the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome in a clinical study that used 200 patients. So that was a significant number there. And L. plantarum LP91 showed strong immunoregulatory capacity in a murine colitis model. The mechanism of action. Exactly how L. plantarum interacts with the host, us, is still not fully understood. L. plantarum is known to produce bacteriocins, which are antimicrobial peptides that kill other bacteria. Pore formation, which is basically when the cytoplasm membrane gets disrupted, is one of those potential mechanisms of the bacteriocins. Bacteriocins promote a bactericidal effect 
with or without cell lysis inhibiting cell growth. So L. plantarum is very well known for producing, we call it metabolites, producing peptides or bacteriosins that kill other bacteria. So you can think of L. plantarum along the lines of an antibiotic, but one that is a natural one. L. plantarum safety, obviously safety is always important. So the US FDA is reviewing the safety of L. plantarum 299V and will likely give it the generally recognized as safe notation. And what we're all interested in is L. plantarum and autism. In 2010, results from a double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover study involving the oral administration of L. plantarum WCFS1 to children with autism were published. And this study found a significant increase in lactobacilli and enterococci and reduced clostridium cluster compared to placebo. So there definitely was a change in the gut microbiota compared to placebo. It also effectively improved stool consistency and decreased overall behavior scores. And remember, the study was done in children with autism. And here are some references.